Dave the Potter, Artist, Poet, Slave by Laban Carrick Hill, illustrated by Brian Collier. Dave was an extraordinary artist, poet, and potter who lived in South Carolina in the 1800s. He combined his superb artistry with deeply observant poetry carved into his pots, transcending the limitations he faced as a slave. In this inspiring and lyrical portrayal, National Book Award finalist Laban Carrick Hill and award-winning artist Brian Collier tell Dave's remar remarkable story, one rich in history, hope, and long-lasting beauty. Dave the Potter, artist, poet, slave. To us, it is just dirt, the ground we walk on. Scoop up a handful, the gritty grains slip between your fingers. On wet days, Heavy with rainwater, it is cool and squishy, mud pie heaven. But to Dave, it was clay, the plain and basic stuff upon which he learned to form a life as a slave nearly 200 years ago. To us, it is just a pot, round and tall, good for keeping marbles or, flesh or fresh cut flowers. But to Dave, it was a pot large enough to store a season's grain harvest, to put up salted meat, and to hold memories. Each one began out of clouds of dust, clotted clumps of clay ground in the pug mill and carried wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow to Dave's spinning potter's wheel. With a flat wooden paddle large enough to row across the Atlantic, Dave mixed clay with water drawn from the hort from Big Horse Creek until wet and stiff and heavy. He threw the clay, sometimes 60 pounds at once, and nobody knew how or where it would land except for Dave. Dave kicked his potter's wheel until it spun as fast as a carnival's wheel of fortune. Like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Dave's hands buried in the mounded mud, mud pulled out the shape of a jar. He clapped his thumbs, pinched into the center, squeezed the inside against his fingers outside. As the wheel spun round and round, <clears throat> the walls of the jar rose up like a robin's puffed breast, but only so far before its immense weight threatened to collapse. The jar grew so large, Dave could no longer wrap his strong arms around it. If he climbed into the jar and curled into a ball, he would have been embraced. Only then did he stop his potter's wheel and rolled long ropes of clay between his dry caked palms. Dave mounted these coils of clay one by one on the half-finished jar. He ran his wet fingers along the sides to smooth it all together, kicking the wheel with the heel of his foot. The shoulder and rim shrugged upwards as the jar took shape. Dave knew was there even before he worked the raw mounded on his wheel. Mm. 
<clears throat> While the clay dried, Dave pounded wood ash and sand to mix a grass-like brown glaze to withstand time. But before the jar completely hardened, Dave picked up a stick and wrote to let us know that he was there. I wonder where is all my relation, friendship to all and every nation. August 16th, 1857, Dave. Dave is an important American artist. His beautiful crafted jars stand out among the pottery of the time. His whimsical poems embody a simplicity and deep emotional complexity that rivals Japanese haiku. These are some of his jars. And these are at the Museum of the University of South Carolina. These are some of the poems that he wrote on his jars, like this one. Put every bit all between, surely his jar will hold 14. Dave belongs to Mr. Miles. I wonder who Mr. Miles was. Who do you think he was, Mr. Miles? Dave belongs to Mr. Miles, where the oven bakes and the pots biles. And the pot biles. A better thing I never saw when I shot off the lion's jaw. Hmm. Another trick is worse than this. Dearest miss, spare me a kiss. When you fill this jar with pork or beef, Scott will be there to get a piece. The sun, moon, and stars in the west are a plenty of bears. Bears? Stars, moon, bears? Like the Ursa Major, maybe? Ursa Major is Mama Bear, or also part of the Big Dipper. And the North Star is part of the Big Dipper. Thank you. <laughs>